Hello, badminton fans, and welcome to this non-racket test session. Today, like with our string testing, we are going to be testing some feather shuttlecocks. Now, before I go on to talk about which shuttlecocks and how we tested them, let's just quickly talk about shuttlecocks themselves. So everybody who plays badminton most likely knows that there are two primary kinds of shuttles used around the world. One are feather shuttlecocks, like this one here. Uh, these are made primarily of goose or duck feather. Goose being the more um, better quality uh, premium product. And duck feather is often used for drilling and stuff like that. Now, the, the reason that people use uh, plastic, nylon, rubber, hybrid shuttlecocks are because they last a lot longer. They don't tend to tear as quickly, and so therefore, from a value for money perspective, they are amazing. So then why are the feather shuttlecocks used worldwide in all tournaments, both international tournaments, national tournaments, league tournaments, county, districts, so on and so forth? Because the flight of a feather shuttlecock is far, more, far smoother, uh, its trajectory is much more natural, and the control on a feather shuttlecock is that much better. However, they are a lot more susceptible to being broken. Um, and as you would have seen, and if you've watched any of the international tournaments, the shuttles are quite often changed uh, frequently during a match. Okay, so let's tell you about which shuttles we have and which shuttles we are going to test today. Uh, we have the RSL number one, retail price £14.75, worldwide availability, fairly good. We have the Yonex AS30, retail price around £20, worldwide availability, pretty good. We have the Victor Gold Maxima, £15.50, uh, worldwide availability, not quite sure, available in Europe, not so sure how availabilities around the globe. The Yonex AS20s, £18.50, available worldwide without a problem. The leaning A plus 60s, around a £15 mark, and notably the only shuttle tube in this test session that has 15 shuttles in the tube, making, this, uh, making the shuttles around £1 a shuttle, which is pretty good. Availability is fairly good in Asia. We sell the leaning a plus 60s in the UK via our site and into Europe. The RSL number threes are the premium RSL uh, shuttle costing £20 for a dozen shuttlecocks. The Kampu Game Point 99, uh, the most expensive uh, shuttle tube here in testing. Uh, this is a BWF approved shuttle. Uh, £21 for 12 Again, this is a shuttle that we sell uh, from our website with, to all customers in Europe, available in Asia without any problems. And finally, don't have a picture of it, but we have also tested the Yelex Gold, sorry, Yelex Orange Championship shuttlecock, retail around £17, worldwide availability, fairly good, certainly in Europe, it's no problem at all, and actually a very popular shuttle. So you know which shuttles, you know their availability, and you know their price. Now, let me tell you what we are going to be testing these shuttles for. The first thing we test them for is the smoothness of flight in the air. The, um, that may sound like a strange thing to test for, but quite often you can come across some cheaper shuttles or not so well made shuttles, and the shuttles can, they can do this, they can suddenly drop. Uh, so we, we're looking for nice smoothness and a natural flight path of the shuttle. Um, control, how easy these shuttles are to control, tight at the net, dropping in, nice, you know, a nice line of flight for the drops where you feel like you've got a real good understanding of where the shuttle's going. Um, we also talk about, we also test, sorry, for the perceived value of the shuttlecock. So our testers, um, wrote down how much they would pay for a tube of these shuttles and so forth, therefore representing the perceived value of these shuttles. We also tested the durability. During our testing, we start a timer and once the shuttle is 
seem to be unfit to play with or is really reducing the quality of the game, it is then swapped over and the timer is stopped. We also talk about how consistent the shuttles are within the tube. So if I take out three of these shuttles, I want them to fly fairly consistent, consistently with each other. In, so one should be comparable to the next and then to the next and to the next. If they're so, so vastly different, players can lose faith in the shuttlecock uh, and in some cases in the brand. So that's also important. We also score for overall performance. So the overall perceived performance by our, our players write down a score for the shuttle. And the last test we do is weigh the shuttle to see if the weight of the shuttlecock actually makes a difference to performance. Now, as you know, we are very used to and experienced at testing rackets, 600 and over 650 rackets now in the E-Zone. And for those of you eagerly awaiting our next test session, uh, we have got all our rackets in. They are all now strung. Currently, the photography is being done on those. So the weight testing, the swing weight testing, the start, uh, stiffness testing, all of that stuff is being done right now. And then next week, we will hit the court with those rackets and start to create some reviews and scores. But back to the shuttles. Despite having loads of equipment for rackets, it's quite difficult to use that equipment to test shuttlecock. So how did we go about it? So we decided we would use an old school route of testing. We got together several players who have got massive, massive experience at playing badminton. A lot of these guys have played in really decent hard leagues during their prime years. Uh, they have hit thousands and thousands of shuttles um, during their time. They are very, very familiar and very, very aware of what a good feather shuttlecock should fly like and behave like. Um, their styles of play, lots of different styles here, deceptive, defensive attack, consistency. Uh, so it's all going on, nice mixture of players, should represent um, general play around the world, you know, irrespective of, of the level you're playing at, these guys can be trusted to judge the shuttlecocks. So, the other important thing to note here is they did not know which shuttle they were testing. They were simply given uh, a shuttlecock without any markings on it, and as you will see here, the insides have been rubbed out, so they have no perception of what Number shuttlecock one. they're testing with. They're simply given some uh, pads and some pens and they have to write down their score so it's as independent as it possibly could be. So we go on to start testing the smoothness of the shuttlecock and in that test here are your results. They felt the Yonex AS20 was the smoothest and most accurate in flight scoring 34 very close to it However, were the Game Point 99, the Leaning A plus 60, the Yonex AS30, and then the Gold Maxima in last place for that particular test. We moved on then to, to look at how well they were able to control the shuttlecock. And here are your results for that. In that test, the perceived control over the shuttle for a score out of 40, the Yonex AS20 again at the top, and there we have the Kampu Game Point 99, the Leaning A plus 60, and in last place is the Yelex Championship Orange. Very, very surprised I was personally to see the Yonex AS30 scoring so low in this particular test. Now we talk about, we looked at perceived value. So here again, just to reiterate what that means, they have to tell us how much they would pay for using this, for paying for this shuttle, a uh, tube of the shuttle they're using, if that makes sense. So, two, two shuttlecocks were perceived to be higher in value than they actually are, and they were the Leaning A plus 60 and the Yonex AS20. RSL number three and the Victor Gold Maxima that were rated to cost exactly how much they do cost. So they wrote down 
uh, you know, 17 or 15 pound 50 for the Victor Gold Maxima, and that's exactly how much they cost. Only that have that only happened with two, uh, and the rest of them they were scored to cost should cost lower than they actually do. Durability, so as I explained before, durability is really they start the game, a time starts and the time the shuttle can't play anymore, it's not, it's not flying properly, it's swerving, it's spinning, it's, not, it's ruining the game, so then they take a new shuttle, off we go, and the timer is reset. Now they do that for three shuttles out of each tube, and in that test, um, the gain point 99 costing 21 pound a tube actually lasted the longest, followed by the Yonex AS30s, and the most disappointing there, I think, is the Yonex S20s down at 28, not lasting anywhere near as long as the other shuttles, despite them having great uh, smoothness and accuracy of flight and great control. Durability is an issue with that shuttlecock. Next, we looked at how consistently the shuttles flew compared to the next shuttle in the tube. They did this for three shuttles. So they take one shuttle, use it, and then when the next shuttle comes out, they, they, they mark it to see how consistently they flew together. Quite consistent batch to batch. You, know, you may get a very different performance from tube to tube, um, but I found in some cases you actually get a very different performance shuttle to shuttle. And what we're trying to determine here is how good, how well are these made and what their manufacturing process is like. Our overall performance for these shuttles was rated as, this is by our players, this is not the overall result, this is how the players judge the shuttles. They believe for overall performance, Yonex AS20 is the best shuttle to buy. For followed closely by the Game Point 99, leaning A plus 60 and the Yonex AS30, leaving the Yelex Championship at a really, really low score, half less than half the score of both the AS20 and the Game Point 99. So where does that leave our test session? Well, the best value for money shuttle from this test session, anyway, from these shuttles that we've tested, is the leaning A plus 60. It is, represents amazing value for money. It lasts a reasonable amount of time. Uh, it doesn't cost too much and you actually get a reasonably good quality gain from it. So it is the best value for money at £15 for 15 shuttles. The next in line, shocking, because the, the best value for money is based on the durability and the cost. They're the two factors that we combine to give you this result. You could argue we should have done the cost of the tube versus the overall performance. Is that best value for money? But when we talk about value for money, we think durability has to be a factor. So that's how why we've done it this way. You may disagree, and if you do, maybe on the next test we can change that. The Game Point 99, despite it costing £21 a tube, it lasts really, really well, decreasing the overall cost of using the shuttlecock. If you're using a £10 a tube shuttle, but you're changing it every three or four minutes, Obviously, you're going through the shuttles at a much faster rate with the gain point 99. You're paying a lot for the tube, but you're using less of them. Now, again, when it comes to this kind of advice, be mindful. A, we're talking about feather shuttlecocks. So if you've got a lot of slices and dices in the club, they may, they may wear down a lot quicker. If you've got some big, big hitters, they may wear down a bit quicker. This is based on the players that you've seen play on the court today. Best value for money, third place coming, goes to RSL number one with a, a reasonable price and lasting a reasonable amount of time. And in fourth, the Yonex AS30s. And look at that, seventh place, seventh place the Yonex AS20s, when we compare the £18.50 buying price and how long they last, despite them being amazing to use, they make them pretty bad value for money. And I'm very, very unfortunately, Yelex Orange at the bottom again, just breaking far too easily and costing too much for that level of breakage. So, 
which shuttle is the best performance shuttle of 2019 we have two joint winners we have the Kumpu Game Point 99 and we have the Yonex AS20 bear in mind what I've just said if you buy the Yonex AS20 it will not last that long it will break really quickly the Kumpu will last outlast the Yonex AS20s but you will be paying £2.50 more per tube. In second place is the Leaning A plus 60. Absolutely amazing. The Leaning A plus 60, you'll see the difference in the height of the tube. That is because you're getting three additional shuttles with the Leaning A plus 60. Both of these we stock in the UK following their performances. We make sure they're available to everybody in Europe. The rest you can get hold of yourself from anywhere else pretty much. Um, in third place was the Yonex AS 30s and again and very unfortunately and our sincerest apologies to Yelex which you know you're all a good bunch of guys and you'll work hard really sorry about this overall result but the, Ye Ye the Yelex Championship Orange came in last so uh, you know we we didn't test them we had a, a random group of people test them who didn't know they were testing Yelex shuttles uh, unfortunately they are, that is the result of the test before we sign out today here are the weight test results for the shuttles so you can see you've seen how now which is the best performing shuttles of 2019 I think you might find it interesting to have a quick look at the weight results here so joint first was the gain point 99 and the aero center or the AS 20s they are the two heaviest shuttles out of the group. Game point nine fifty-three sorry five point three five grams and the Yonix AS20s five point two three grams. Right, so that's those two now. The others second place and third place went to the leaning and the AS thirties. So the leanings in third place weigh 4.73 grams and the Yonex AS30 is 5.01. The RSL Tawny number one 4.84, RSL Tawny number three 4.94. Uh, we were not able to measure the Yelex shuttlecock as I said the Yelex shuttlecock came in late to our test we did get to test it on court however we did not get to do some of the pre-testing that we did with the other shuttlecock so that concludes it you now know which strings are best you now know which shuttles are best for 2019 we will repeat this test for 2020 have we missed out an important shuttlecock that you've used uh, that you think is brilliant, you think needs to be included in this test, then please bring it on, let us know, leave some comments and we will make a note as we do with the rackets and if it's possible for us to get hold of that shuttle and test it, we will test it. The Racket E-Zone is due to get updated very, very shortly. Uh, our next videos are coming up really soon. We were going to do some preview videos but just haven't got time to fit it in to be completely honest so we will just be doing the normal release where we test the rackets and upload the results to the e-zone thank you again for tuning in thank you again for all the support uh, you know we love to hear from you guys we do our best to reply it's very hard because not only do we get a lot of comments on youtube we also get a lot of emails and there's a lot going on in the Bamton Racket Review world right now. But thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for spreading the word, uh, the word across so many countries. We now have 100. We have su subscribers to the E-Zone now from over 118 different countries. That is pretty phenomenal. Just bearing in mind, we've only been online for two years. Uh, so we're pretty uh, impressed with that. Keep spreading the word, keep sharing, keep liking, keep loving, and keep subscribing to the YouTube channel, to Instagram, to Facebook, to the E-Zone, um, and we will be back soon with the next Racket Test Session.